Okay, we are now ready to derive the aggregate demand curve and we are going to use two diagrams, the ISL model, and we are going to do the aggregate demand curve here. Now what we are going to look at is to explain why is it that there is a relationship between the price level in the economy and the level of output. And we are going to show that if the price level drops, it will be an increase in the level of output and income. And the opposite is also true if the price level increases, there is going to be a decrease in the level of output and income. So there's a negative relationship between the price level and the level of output and income. Now, there are basically three reasons why you can have such a negative relationship. The one is the wealth effect. And here the argument is that if the price level should drop, households feel more richer or wealthier, and they will tend to increase their consumption spending. So you work through that consumption function. The other argument is based on the Keynesian interest rate effect. That is where the argument is a change in the price level changes the real money supply, which then changes the interest rate, and in return that changes investment spending and output in the goods market. And the other argument goes through the exchange rate effect, and that will be where the decrease in the price level makes you more competitive and you can therefore export more and that will stimulate your level of output and production. Now we're working in a closed economy so we won't be looking at that argument and we are definitely busy with a Keynesian model so we will for now just ignore the wealth effect. And we're going to use the ISL model which you know consists of the IS curve which represents your goods market and you have a LM curve, and this is your interest rate, the level of output. Now what we're going to do is to assume there's a certain price level, say price level P2 in the economy. Given that price level, this is where my goods market and financial market are in equilibrium. And we're going to say that is an interest rate of 2, output of, output 1, given this assumption that the price level is P2. Then we will go to this diagram here. This is where we will plot the AD curve. This is where we measure the price level and the level of output. Now, what we're saying is at the price level of P2, and this is P2, the level of output given this ISLM curve here is output 1. And we will say this point then represents represents one point on our AD curve, which shows at the price level of P2, it's at this level of output that the goods market is in equilibrium, as well as the financial market. So both markets are in equilibrium at point 1. So you can see how point 1 here corresponds to point 1 in that diagram. Then what we do is, the next step will be to say, let's assume the price level drops. So there's a decrease in the price level. Now, if the price level decreases, it is then a decrease in the real money supply, follows that. And we have learned that if you increase the real money supply, you have a decrease in the interest rate. And as the interest rate decreases, you get an increase in investment, aggregate demand, and the level of output. So what happens in your ISLM model is that as the real money supply increases, the LM curve shifts to the right. And there you can see how the interest rate declines and how you get an increase in the level of output. So what happened here in your aggregate demand curve diagram is you have a decrease in the price level, let's say to P1, as the price level decreases, the real money supply increases, the interest rate drops, and the level of output increases. So you can, from this diagram, you can see that the level of output at a price level of P1 is now at that point. So what you can do is you can get different points for different price levels. We'll take the shortcut and just draw a straight line through these two points and that then is our aggregate demand curve 
showing this negative relationship between the price level and the level of output. Now note, as you move from this point to that point, this is the process that is taking place in the financial and the goods market, and that is represented by the rightward shift of the LM curve. So if you look at point two, now corresponds to point two in your ISLM model. That's why we can say that any point on the aggregate demand curve represents points where both the financial and the goods market are in equilibrium. 